I'm sure people are going to see this and think, oh god, what now? I kind of figured by now that I would be annoying some people with all my constant posts about my daily life and my achievements. At the risk of sounding arrogant, I could really care less at this point about what people think of me. I've come a long way to get where I am, especially in this past year. I just want to tell my story. Not because I'm starving for attention, not because I want you to feel sorry for me or admire me. I just want to share my journey in the hope that some of you might identify with your own personal struggles and find a way to build a strong sense of resiliency that allows you to live the life you want to live. There's so much more to people than what meets the eye, but we need to learn how to let those scars help define us, no matter how deep the wound was. I guess it all started when I was growing up, maybe around when I was five or six. We moved from a house that was literally like four blocks over there, but we moved to this house and it was all old and shitty and it was big and scary. I think I just got a little bit burned out on sports. I mean, I was always playing something, you know? I was always natural ability, but never was able to hone my skills because I never had that mental edge that I think is really important in competition and sports and stuff like that. Growing up playing so many sports, I was just, that competitive attitude kind of translated into everything. So it's like I had to be the best at everything, otherwise I was inadequate. And so when it came to socializing or just having the cool clothes or anything like that, like I didn't measure up, then it, it hurt me. I had a couple rough things happen my freshman year of high school. I mean, I think everybody has something happen to them at least, and it stuck with me because I did I, I let it get to me instead of either just owning it or saying, screw you, I don't really care, I let it get to me. And I think it goes back to that same kind of attitude, like, oh my god, I look stupid, oh, I just made an error kind of thing with sports, like, I screwed up, me, I'm... It's, I'm to blame, you know, it's my fault, and it just, like, really took its toll and then kind of set the pace for high school. And, you know, there were still some good times in high school, I still had fun, but I think for the most of it I just kind of was a drifter and didn't really have any sense of purpose or direction. went to NAU and I just kind of half-assed it. I was like, okay, sounds like a good school. And my parents never like nudged me into anything else. They wanted to do a couple trips up to like Northern California to see some other schools, but I was like, nah, I'm good with the school. And just whatever. And then uh, my dad said I should major in accounting because that's a good job. So that's where I landed. I think after I went through my first bad bout of depression in my senior year, I came out of it and going back to that thing in fifth grade, I was just manic. I was just got reckless. And I, you know, had a lot of fun, probably a little too much fun. And, you know, I burned bridges with people. I did things like, you know, petty theft. And really in the big scope of things, it's not a big deal, but it's not healthy behaviors kind of deal. Didn't have a good sense of purpose, a healthy sense of purpose. I thought I knew what I want, wanted, at least. And so that's like when I pledged the fraternity and stuff like that. So that seemed great. It was great for a while. And then I just remember, you know, I butted heads with other guys that I was pledging with and I was living in the house. Um, when I was going through the whole thing and then my grandma passed away and so I had to, my mom called me and told me and she's like, you need to come to the funeral. You have to be there. I was like, okay. So I went to the funeral and everything and I got a voicemail from the, the president or the main dude and he's like, hey, please call me as soon as you land. And I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. And he was just told me what had happened. He's like, hey, so each time we do a pledge class, the pledges get to get together and see if there's anybody that 
they want to vote out and you got voted out. That started me down the wrong hill again, you know? And so then I had to move out of the house, moved into the crappiest, oldest dorm on campus. Because I didn't really want to hang out with anybody in the frat anymore and that's kind of put all my eggs in that basket so I didn't really have anything else. Finished out that semester, all C's and one F. That sucked. And then I had to bring that home to my parents and I just remember my dad being like, what happened? And I was just like, a lot? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Waste all your money. When I went back, I was not really optimistic at all, I would say, actually. I wasn't ready for it. And so, switched my major to chemistry because I thought that would be cool. And I took AP Chem in high school. I thought I'd be good at it, and I was just wasn't ready for that at all. And so, two weeks I think I lasted, and I just called my mom and was like, can't do it. I can't, I gotta come home. So, I just felt so burned and defeated, and it sucked. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, wasn't really doing anything for myself. Finally ended up getting a job working at a golf course doing greenskeeping. Little by little, um, you know, I came back, started seeing psychiatrists again. Then things just kind of seemed to fall in place. Um, started dating the girl, um, had some friends. I remember I had a party over here once. It was fun, and uh, yeah, things just were falling into place. And then that relationship went sour, and that kind of sent me tumbling back down again. And then I think this is around when I was 22-ish. Um, I was just feeling real lonely and lost and, you know, I just felt rejected by a lot of people, even though I think on the outside people thought I was, had it all together, but on the inside it's just had that cognitive dissonance where the inside wasn't lining up with the outside. So it's just, it just wasn't working. And so things just got really bad and I was seeing a therapist and I, Told him I wasn't doing too well and I think I wanted to take my life. First time was in the mental hospital for one night and they were basically like, what the hell are you doing here? Are you, you're not depressed? Like, are you kidding me? Like, look at this guy. And I was like, well, I don't feel very happy, you know? That's not it's just not there. And I don't think anybody really bought it. I mean, there was plenty of other people in there that Definitely belonged in mental hospitals, so you could tell. But, you know, they'd look at me and they'd just like, but you're fine. I'm like, no, I'm really not. But when I got out the second time, it was just, okay, I'm back out here. What's changed? Not much. I mean, I still, I was there for a week, got plenty of therapy. You know, my employer had to tell them, obviously, what had happened, so that sucked. And ended up kind of stepping on my own shoelaces and tripping and I was going back down again, but then I was like, you know what, I just need to move out. I need to get out on my own. I'd lived at home my whole life other than when I went away to NAU for that semester in two weeks. Um, I need to, you know, push myself. And now, like, looking back on that, I'm realizing, like, how important it is to continue to push yourself. Like, even if you think you have mastered everything or you're just comfortable with what you're doing, you have to continue to pursue something new, travel somewhere new meet new people, switch up your routine, do something. You can't just get into the same daily routine because it just gets boring. You're just running in circles after a while. I was still on the medication. I mean, I had been on ever since my senior year of high school when I was 17 and uh, hated it. I mean, there were times when I felt like it might have worked, times when I, it didn't work, had plenty of side effects, you know, all that stuff. Not supposed to mix it with drinking, I was drinking a lot, and, you know, finding solace in food and stuff, and it's just, it wasn't a good combination. <laughs> so the medication wasn't working, and so then I was just like, okay, what other treatments is there? And the first thing that comes up is ECT. Um, if you're not familiar with that, if you've ever seen One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest, they basically, now they sedate you, and then they basically fry your brain and kind of shock you. Luckily I didn't have to because I found this other thing called TMS or Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation Therapy. Um, 
which seemed a little less traumatic. Um, basically, it's like a milder version of ECT, where they put like a magnetic coil on your head, and uh, they stimulate the left prefrontal cortex, which is like the pleasure center, I guess. It controls all your your mood and all that good stuff. Because after many many years of depression. Uh, all that stress and the cortisol in your system takes a toll on you and I found that pretty fascinating actually to see that it can actually physically and chemically alter your body and your brain. So it was basically four to six weeks, five days a week and I think online it said that the sessions are upwards of like an hour but these were only like 15-20 minute sessions and so I went in for an evaluation, told them my story and everything and then started the treatments and uh, worked it out with my employer to where I was able to leave work early enough to get there for my treatments every day at three o'clock and it was just like <laughs> could have been more perfect it was on the way home from work stop there do my treatments go home or go to the gym or whatever I was gonna do that day and uh, I think at first after the first one or two treatments I was like wow cool like I feel a little bit better um, and then Later that week and early the next week, I was feeling down again and I asked the therapist about it and I was like, has anybody ever gone through that? He's like, yeah, like you're probably probably experiencing a little bit of a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy to where you kind of, you know, got what you thought you needed, but you know, you're just feeling better about it. So, you know, see it through for at least four weeks and see how you feel. Over the next few weeks, I started taking on more responsibility at work started just pushing my comfort zone, started running again, um, joined back with the softball team. First two at-bats, I hit two home runs. Like, just killed it. And I was just so happy. And everybody's like, wow, where the hell did you come from? And I was just like, I'm back, I guess. And then there was another time where I was going for a run, ran down by Dog Beach and ran out on the jetty where there's all those wild cats. And uh, I wanted to swim that jetty for the longest time, even though there's a bunch of dog piss and shit in it. And so, I was like thinking about it, I had my clothes and my shoes on and everything, like, got down to the edge and I was just like, screw it, jumped in and swam across in my clothes and everything, and I got out on the other side just soaked and there was like people at the shore kind of like looking at me like, this guy, like what a weirdo, you know. Now it sounds cheesy and stuff like that, but I swear to God, and I see it every day, I just put love out into the world and it comes right back. It sounds super sappy, but I... I've seen it too many times and had way too many weird coincidences and I remember I was at, at Ross one day buying some stuff and some lady let me cut her in line because I had a quick return and she had like 10 things she had to return, return my thing and then I was walking out and she turns to me and she's like, oh by the way, Jesus loves you. And I was just like, what the, that was creepy. Like, and there's been, there's been so many moments like that over the past couple months that I'm just like, okay, there's something going on right now. Like that's out of my control. Whether it's God or something, I don't know. I don't really care, but it's keeping going in the right direction. And uh, it feels amazing. Yeah, shortly after I moved back home, you know, I was just, things were going great. And I just felt like, you know, working out and doing the gym had always been a big part of my life, especially through the rough times. Um, but I wasn't getting the full benefit of it, you know, physically and mentally that I wanted at least. And so I just kind of fell into my lap. There was an ad on Facebook one day like, hey, free workout at this gym, come check it out. I was like, sure, why not? Like I've thought about doing CrossFit for a long time and like, yeah, it sounds super basic. Could care less, it's whatever. And so I, they called me within 30 minutes of me responding to the ad and she invited me and she's like, and I told her my spiel, I was like, you know what, I've been doing my own thing for a while, I kind of just teach myself and, you know, I'm in pretty decent shape, but, you know, I want more. And she's like, okay, well, I'll give you a free week if you want to come check it out. So, went there on a Friday, worked out, and it was just, like, love at first lift. And, like, I'll just never forget, like, all the people and the experiences that I've had at that gym so far. Um, you know, getting second in that rookie competition after being there for one week. Um, just the people that I meet there and the culture and the community and the strong-minded, you know, 
mindset that everybody has there that they share and the love it's just it's fantastic it's a cool place and it's really been a very like another home you know it's my my home away from home three or four days a week whenever I go there the whole reason that I wanted to do this was just because I know that mental health is a, still carries a big stigma even though you know I've seen it on billboards and buses and stuff like that you know like it's up to us SD and you know, I think there is a movement and it's coming out that depression is just rampant and I think that most of it stems from not having your sense of purpose and knowing what you want to do in life and not letting somebody else dictate that for you. Whether that be society or your elders or whoever you look up to or is just around you. I think that you have to do whatever you have to do to find it in yourself to get what you want out of life, whatever that may be, and as weird as it may be, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, I think that you do you, I think that's just what it's all about.